Well, welcome back to another episode of Only Dude in the House. This is part five of a series that I've been doing on getting this rear end replaced on this 1992 GMC Sonoma so that I can get it back on the road. Today, I'm gonna work on the brakes and topping off the fluids, doing a brake bleed and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. I've got tires to put on, a bunch of stuff that needs to get done. This is my last day. I go back to work tomorrow. So I'm really hoping I can get this up and running before the end of the day so that I can uh, maybe perhaps drive it to Kishocton tomorrow. <laughs> All right, so first of all, I had to get the car out of here, which has brought in a bunch of mud because it's still snowy out. And uh, so I'm gonna get these tires out of the way, and then I'm gonna clean up a little area right here to work with. And uh, I think what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna do a part of this video, but I might pull it out. But I'm gonna do a simple how-to uh, job on doing drum brakes for this truck. Because I've watched some videos and some other amateur people that have done it, and. They don't do a very good job of telling you all the little steps and this will be my very first time doing it so that should make for a very good interesting video why do you have to constantly go on? i'm standing right here i gotta walk over here and turn this stupid light off all right anyways so my plan is is to do a video um just kind of showing the steps on putting these uh these drum brakes back on i'm going to use all the same hardware that was already on there because it wasn't bad. There's uh, there's still plenty of shoe uh, pad on on those those brakes. All the bits and pieces are in good shape. I'm actually just I got some uh, brake cleaner and we just clean this stuff off and you know rejuvenize it, make it look good, make it look factory. So there's the parts for that. So I'm just gonna clean up this area. So I'm gonna start working on that here for the next few minutes and. Uh, just to try to make a little workable space and and uh, get started. Lots to do today. Okay, well, I wanted to get one side done completely before I uh, do a video of it, to make sure I did it correctly, but the, uh, the drum, the shoes are all on. I'm getting ready to go ahead and set the drum, and there is a very specific way you gotta do it. You gotta play at the adjuster, which is down here. I don't know if you can see it or not, right there, and uh, get these shoes to open and close a little bit um, to try to make sure that it's, uh, that it's just making a slight, like a light, slight catching noise. And, um, and we'll be good to go. So here we go. Okay. Well, I got, uh, I got the drum on. It was kind of a pain because of where the, it just didn't want to get on there very well. So I do need to take it back off and try to readjust it, but it was such a pain to get on. I don't know. I may just leave it on there and just back up and reverse. Let it adjust itself. Yep, that's probably what I'm gonna do. So, um, anyways, now time to move on to the other side. Okay, here's all the parts and pieces for the drum brakes on the other side. And I know what you're thinking, how in the world do you know where what goes? Well, I just have a photographic memory. Honestly, after watching the video and then this other side, I really kind of know where it's at. So what I want to do now is I want to rejuvenate this stuff since I'm using the parts that were already on here because they're not bad. Uh, don't worry, I'm just, I'm on a budget and I'm already over budget trying to get this thing done. So, so I'm gonna use some uh, rejuvenation spray. And by that, I mean brake parts cleaner. 
and just kind of spray these suckers down and uh, help kind of bring them back. Takes all that old stuff off. And I know it's gonna take some of the paint off of the colors of the springs and stuff, but that's okay. No one's gonna see any of that. It's gonna be buried underneath the drum and tires and stuff. So I'm almost out. So I gotta, so I gotta do the back side of these other two. So I'm gonna finish this up, let them dry for just a second, and then I'm gonna wipe them down with a shop cloth, and then we'll move over and get them installed. All right, here we go. Working on the uh, driver's side, and we've got the, uh, I got, it's hard to see in this darkness, but they got the emergency brake put on. I couldn't do it by myself. I had to have some help. But right now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put this together, and uh, this is gonna be kind of a crude, Set up. I forgot my crease up here. Set this stuff over here. All right. So, well, when you do the back end, the back end is going to be. So I'm going to set this up just the way it's going to be, and. Uh, I'm going to pick it right up from here, and I'm going to put it right on the drum. Um, so anyways, this is, uh, this is how I learn uh, this, because I'm very new to this, and I've never done this before, or it's been very, very, quite a few years since I've seen someone do it. So I just went on YouTube, and I just did a video of myself, but I wanted to do a video of my own, kind of breaking this down so that um, those that are on a fixed budget that don't have all maybe all the tools that really are required can really do this very easily and uh and save some money in the process when you're trying to trying to uh get this done on a, on a budget so so anyways the end that has the more more of the brake pad that goes to the back the side that doesn't have so much goes to the front um these little lips they fit on up on the top up here of the uh above the the piston and um so that's how you know what direction they're going to go. So again, I'm gonna, once I get this put together, I'm going to put it right up on here. So your spring, this one here, and they're normally colored, but uh, I rejuvenated these. So all the paint's coming off is eventually probably when I save up a little bit more, I'm going to get all new uh, hardware and new uh, shoes. But there's enough shoe on here right now that I, I did not need to do this. So anyways, the back... The back part's going to go on to where it's not going to, uh, you want it to go on so that it doesn't uh, rub the, uh, it doesn't rub the adjuster. So when the adjuster goes on, it has clearance to be able to, to uh, go on there. So here, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some of this anti-seize ointment that I got, and you can just buy a small package of them at your local uh, auto parts store instead of buying a whole pa uh, you know a whole uh, container of it costs a whole lot more these are pretty inexpensive for just doing a, an easy small project like this but just take a, a little dab of that on your finger and uh, rub it on these rub it around on these uh, threads just get some of that on there some people use some people will use um, you know high temp grease this is still high temp, it's still, uh, you know, anti-seize. I wanna get some more on there, so I'll put some more on my finger. Right. Get, some around this, get some around this as well. I keep taking it outside the camera. So again, this is gonna be kind of crude, but um, you know, just get some on there and then continue to get some on the threads. That way this thing will uh, move and, and work properly and you won't have any issues of it uh, not working the way it needs to. So now, just take this and thread that back in. I'm gonna wipe my hands off here. Shop cloth. By shop cloth, I mean my pants. So I'll bring that back in.
All right, so just bring it back in all the way so it's threaded tight. And then um, and you got your other your other end here. You just put that back on there, and now you see that's all that's all lubed up, ready to go. So, anyways, so you got one side. And I actually got this on backwards. So let me flip this over. This is why. It takes a couple times to kind of figure this out, but if you go step by step like this, it does make it easier. And then you can to get this other piece on. All you got to do is. Just flip this um, down like this. There we go. And then you just, boom. There you go. Now it's all together, ready to go. And now I'm just going to pick this up and I'm going to put it right up on the, uh, up here on the, uh, on the drum. So now what we want to do is you can get a little packet of grease like this from your local uh, auto parts store as well. And what you want to do is you want to grease up these uh, these areas right here. There's three spots where they're rubbing and um, on all sides here. And so I'm just going to use some of this grease that I have here and uh, just dab some of that on here. I used gloves last time, but I'm not going to use gloves this time. I'll just, I'll just wipe it off when I'm done. No big deal. If you don't like getting your hands dirty, then this is probably not the kind of work for you anyways. So just get some on there and help spread it around it's kind of cold out here today so this stuff is kind of wore off trying to figure out where that other one is at this helps this is where they're going to be rubbing back and forth and so it just kind of helps keep that lubed and and uh you know the heat of the friction back and forth allows it to slide a little bit better all right now that we got all the lube on there you're going to take this these shoes are going to come around here and then this emergency brake comes in there's a little bracket right in here a little spot where this this is gonna come up and lock into let's see if I can get this on the camera so you can see it just gonna, gonna wiggle it in there there we go I got it on it's hooked it's ready to go so now you can bring this around here nothing Tell you nothing is all nothing about this is exactly simple the only way i'd say this is simple for anybody is if you're a mechanic and you've been doing this for many many years and just know all the ins and outs all right i'm gonna pause for a second i gotta get a better piece of cardboard since i'm on the floor okay so now we've got these on so now what i need to do next is we need to uh i need to get the Brackets put on for the adjuster, and uh, that goes over here. You need to work on that, and then uh, also you need to put this on for the uh, emergency brake. So I'm gonna slide that in first, actually. Get that put on. It's not. It's not easy to do this. Yeah after you got these other springs and stuff on. So I don't know if you can see very well inside here. Let me wipe this off. Okay, so inside here is where this clips on. on this side, there's a little clip here and that emergency brake that that clips on. There it goes. And then on this side, there's a, there's a little lip this goes into just sits right above that i thought before it kind of fell into that but it didn't so all right so that's the second step so you got the first step is is to make sure that the thicker sides on the back and the front i always do it on the floor making sure that your adjuster and spring like we said earlier then um then putting on the emergency bracket which is up here for the emergency brake and then the uh adjuster or the uh emergency uh, uh return uh spring for the emergency brake goes there so now we're kind of in place here but we got to get these attached so i'm going to start with the back there's a smaller spring they're all color coded but the smaller spring goes on over here so this goes on here there's a little there's a little uh kind of looking nail looking thing comes in through the back so i'm gonna get all my pieces set, set aside here for this one Ugh. 
So there's two springs. One's a bigger one. So like this is the bigger one for the front and this is the smaller one for the back. Since you got this bracket, you got to put on for the emergency brakes or uh, for the adjuster. I mean, you want to you want to use the smaller one on this side. So back here in the back behind the, the plate, there is a hole that this goes through. So there's a little hole back here. And this nut goes through and then it pokes out right there. I think you can see that. Sorry about the crudeness of this, but I'm uh, doing this amateurily. So, um, so anyways, then, uh, then this bracket goes down just like this. So it goes over here onto that. And then there's this one that has a little bit of a deeper, uh, that kind of falls right into place here. You don't have to keep your finger in the back to keep this aligned. So that falls in there. And then you got your spring and uh, this fell off on this. Now, there's all kinds of tools that you could buy to do this. If you're a mechanic and you're doing this all the time, perhaps. Me, a pair of uh, vice grips is what I use. So I'm going to loosen these up and I'm going to get them uh, clamped on. So you got the spring. You got to put your finger back behind here and you got to hold this in place. Make sure all this is nice and tight and snug inside. And then all you do is just push this on and then you twist it. That's where the this comes in handy. And then you just twist it and then oh release we're good so now so now that is on adjust this stuff up a little bit and so the adjuster is on here now there is a spring you're going to want to do this part, part next there's another spring it's kind of like a funnel shape one side's a little bit uh thicker than the other side so you want to take that shorter side and there's this little nub underneath the adjuster and you want to put that on there and then just put that spring, there's a little uh, raised spot on the shoe where that goes. So then that'll fall into place. And it'll spring, it'll spring but you're gonna, you'll spring it back once you get these uh, other pieces on. So we're uh, definitely in the home stretch now. Now, so what I wanna do now is you get this little wash, this part here, this is gonna go on up here. Like I said, I'm using old pieces, so this stuff is going to be really tight to get on. Then you got this bracket. So this bracket attaches to the adjuster up here, and then it comes back on this top. So you're going to take that, and you're going to loop it around the little adjuster hook here, like that. And what that does is it springs back down, down here. And then, get a hold of it here. Oh, a little more. I'm trying to see if I can do this without having to use the pliers, but I'm gonna have to use the pliers. Let's try to keep that down below. So you stay up there. And that needs to go in there. Now, what I use on this is you can use um, just for this part. I'm just gonna use a pair of channel locks just to be able to pull this up and up and over on top of it. So. There's a little bit of a spring to it. All right, I'm just going to use this to go the rest of the way. There we go. So now we're in the spot that we need to be in. Just have to kind of play with everything. Get it adjusted back around. Oops. Make sure everything's still in place. I need a little more slack on this side. So you got to kind of push this back in there a little bit because you're going to need, definitely going to need some room in there screwdriver let's make sure that everything's kind of snugged in the place because you want to have you're going to bring this next spring around over top of this so that's what i'm going to do next because it's it's the easiest to work with so i'm going to bring that so this has got to come up over that so what i do here is i use a pair of channel locks on this it's a little easier to work with kind of locks down into place like that and that way you can get a hold of it maybe some tools. I'm working on cardboard so everything's slippery there we go now she's on so 
of everything. Oh, I see what I did. <laughs> Reason I'm having such a hard time is because I missed a step. I missed a step. So I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna do this now. It's not that big a deal. Should be able to get this on. But we're supposed to do this first. I totally missed it. It's on now, so we're good. Forgot to put that spring on. So that spring is on, everything's good there. Everything's still attached above where it needs to be. On there, on there, yep. Everything looks good there. On the adjuster, oh, this, there we go, that fell into place. Yep, that adjuster's in there, perfect. Okay, and I'll bring you around, let's see. All right, you can see the adjuster's where it needs to be. All I forgot was that spring. I'm sorry. That should have been the next step. Once you do this side, you should do this side, and I just missed it. Like I said, this is the first time, but I just wanted to put this out here for someone that has never done this before. Got this spring on. This bracket went on first. Attaches, attaches to the adjuster, pulls up over this. And then I put this spring on here so that would hold and stop moving, which it would have. It would have been not moving had I forgot not to put that on so we got one spring left and that's this one here and uh that goes in through a hole in here like this comes up like that and then it's just going to hook on there so again i just grab my channel lock or uh vice grips channel locks i'm gonna try to grab it down as far as i can make it easier and then just pull it and up and around <clears throat> bada bing bada boom there we go it's all there it's adjusted down to where we need it you can see how it's all in place the springs are all in place well this should be actually up a little bit higher i'm going to try to see if i can fix that with a screwdriver but everything else is is looking good so that's how that works let's see if i can get this spring set back into place oh without taking it out all the way oh we go that's in the right spot now long head screwdriver there you go see now we're in place so everything looks good all right so that's it on that that's how you uh you uh install brake shoes on a uh gmc sonoma the the 90 series this is a 1992 um but i'm not sure they may all be the same so all right now i'm going to get the uh, drum put on Okay, now it's time to go ahead and get this drum put on. I'm going to do the same thing here. I'm going to just use some of this anti-seize. I'm going to put that around these lug nuts. And uh, that way, when I go to thread on the, uh, the uh, lug nuts, it won't be so bad getting them on and off. And as they heat up and they temp up, then they... They won't, uh, they won't seize on and then you're not having to heat it and bang on it and do all that. Okay, I got the anti-seize all on that. So now it's time to put the drum on. Now these are, these are being bunkers going on here. So what I'm doing, since I can't get to do that, so I'm gonna go to this other side and I'm gonna lock up this differential. And, um, and then what I'm gonna do is I'm going to uh, use the uh, use the lug nuts to tighten this thing down so all right so just start threading these on they're gonna be tight so i'm gonna have to use i'm gonna have to use the tool the crossbar to get these on because this, uh, these uh lugs these have been sitting out for quite some time at that junkyard it's good all right so i'm just going to turn this the opposite way knock my crowbar and then you can hear the, it's grabbing over there there's some spots along up here 
in this area, or I'm gonna have to go around and pull them out with a screwdriver because Levi and I were banging on them trying to get these hubs, these drums off the first time. And um, in the process, we just did some damage to it, so. It's catching a little bit on that other side over there. I think that's I think that's just the brake drum dragging a little bit. I'm gonna have that. Well, we're all good. All right, now it's time to go in and work underneath here and. Get some stuff uh, bolted up and make sure we're nice and tight and snug on the differential. So we'll move over to that. Get the pallet, the brakes uh, nice and snug on that. Need to pull some bolts off. Then I gotta open it up and add some more gear oil. Make sure it's full. Top that off. And then uh, and then we'll work on uh, the other fluids that's left on here. The transmission fluid. Gotta add a little more there. And then we gotta bleed the brakes. Brakes need to be bled. That'll be probably first once I get all this done. But um, we're getting there. We're getting there. Okay. Under here, working on this rear diff. What I'm gonna do is I gotta, uh, I gotta unbolt this to get this parking brake in here, or this parking brake, the brake stuff in, and uh, so I get it lined up. And uh, that's gonna be. A little more difficult than it looks to get that on there and then this one is going to go over here somehow so i gotta, gotta be very careful i want to bend these brake lines too much and uh get them book on here so nice. click click it's dork all right now we can bring this back down oh, breaking a brake line there we go all right perfect now we just got this one. That needs to just. Oops. A lot longer. Okay. Hopefully this is right. Snug. Dork. 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 Ooh, you let know that one loose. Dork. Oops. Anyway. Let me tighten all those down. I guess not. Those are a little loose. All right, this is the secret. He said they used to use these, uh, just the air filters, just run them the opposite direction that you go. So your airflow goes that way. So you put it on this way. I had to go out and steal a hose clamp off of Big Blue from the filter there. I'm just gonna squeeze this on and then I'm just gonna clamp this down and uh, this point in time i'm just gonna let it dangle because i don't have time i'm running out of time i need to bleed these brakes and uh add transmission fluid actually i need to get the diff filled so i need to get on this other side try to uh fill it up but seth's got some some of these hose clamps he said i could borrow or get one off of him the other day so anyways what i'll probably eventually do is just tie this off to something you know, I don't know, but for now, you can just hang out right there. Well, let's see if this works or not. I don't know. I need to go that way. My extension go. There it is. This is where 
we gotta put gear oil in, but I don't know that I'm gonna be able to get this thing broken open to do it. And so there's definitely not enough gear oil on it. I'm not gonna get it in there. Nope, no sir. I don't know how we're gonna turn that open. Well, every project has its, you know, its uh, things that you gotta go through and uh, this one doesn't is not an exception. I mean, we've had our issues along the way, but I needed to get some more gear oil inside the differential. And unfortunately, because of the way this thing is, uh, uh, how old it was is out of a junkyard, I couldn't get the plug open. So um, it was completely, basically empty when we uh, filled it. And um, so I had to do some calculation. It takes roughly about two quarts, a little over two quarts, not much more than two and a half from what I'm seeing online. So I was able to pull the breather and I had this, um, this little one here, which was small enough, the tip of this was small enough that I could put it over the breather and add some. So Seth the other night put a little bit, a little bit of quart, maybe a little bit over a quart or so. There was a little bit still left in this. And then I filled this back up to about the same as what was left. So I figure with what he put in, what I put in and all that, we should be pretty darn close to where it needs to be. So I had to pull that tube off of there and then um, and then just kind of shoot it in through that way. It is what it is. I'm sure I'm gonna get a lot of criticism for it, but until I can get something on that tab and um, I think it's gonna be okay. At least it's got gear oil, that's the important thing. So now I need to go on to bleeding the brakes because I am running out of time. Okay, I'm on to bleeding the brakes. Haley's come down here to help me do this because I can't do it by myself. So what I need you to do is I need you to get in the truck uh -huh. and uh, we need to roll this window down so we can hear each other. What I'm gonna do is have you pump the brake pedal, okay. like push it in, push it out. And I'll tell you push, release, all right? Yeah. So push is push in, release is release. Well, all right, and let's see if we can get these things bled. Okay. Pump. It's already pumped. Alright, pump it again. Pump it again. Pump. Keep pumping. Keep pumping. Keep pumping. Keep pumping. Keep pumping. pumping. Alright, hold it, hold it. Alright, release. Okay, that side should be good. Over here and we'll check this side. All right, brake lines are all bled. Haley helped me with that. Now uh, everything is hooked back up. I think at this point in time, it's time to, um, I mean, I think it's just time to try to jump this thing and see if we can get it started. All right, we're all hooked up. Let's see if we can get her jumping.
Yeah, I'm using a uh, I'm using a gas nozzle. Put some transmission in there. It looks like mine looks like it was a little more full, so. All right, well, that's going to do it for right now. Um, I got to get cleaned up. I got to get going to have pizza with Pastor Seth and Colin and the family. So for now, I think what we're going to do is just uh, let it go and um, come back maybe tonight, try to put the tires on. It won't take me long to swap the tires out. Let's just try putting the tires on and, uh, and then dropping it on the ground. I got to get everything off of it and clean it off. And I just I don't have time to do that right now. Start the Ranger, get the Ranger out of the way and and um i don't know just see what happens so. all right we're back home and uh we got the sonoma running haley's inside the truck we're gonna try to bleed these brakes a little bit more because they still have a light on and they're still really soft so we're gonna give that a try right now after we're done doing that then i'm gonna close everything up and try to um put the tires on see if we can get this thing to move okay well we got them all bled i shut things off close the door so i can uh I needed to run uh, a new breather line. I got a piece of longer hose so I didn't have that short hose and I could zip tie it off. I'll show you that here in a second. So now I'm going to get everything cleaned up, pull the tools away and uh, work on getting on the tires. So quickly I wanted to show you what I did. All right, so I put a new hose line from here and then I tied it up over there. So that's the new breather line. And I hate those clamps that are on there right now, but that's all I've got. So I'm going to put the camera over here, do like a time lapse while I work on getting tools cleaned up and getting the tires put on so that uh, <clears throat> um, shortens the length of time. You don't have to sit here and watch me put tires on. All right, tires are on. I even put some poverty rings on them. This one, I'm gonna have to find another one online. I might just find the set. So I just put that pitted one. Hang on, honey. Cat wants inside tonight. Over here, over here. So all good to go. I'm gonna start up here in a second and let uh, let it ride. I, man, I'm so glad Pastor Seth let me use that tonight. That made it so much easier. 
jump in real quick. I thought I had my other gloves somewhere on here. I don't know where they went, but I'm gonna start her up and uh, back it out and see how it works. There goes the light again. All right, well, it's dark in here for now. Turn the light on, but here we go, starting her up. This window up. I don't need both of them now. <laughs> Seatbelt on. All right. Reverse. Ooh, it locked it. It's holding it. It's moving. Here we go. Turn, this. Turn the lights on. There we go. Lights. Oh, lights work. and get up this hill. It's a little icy. Here we go. Let's try. Street. Let's see what she does. I don't know what the scraping noise is. Uh, trying to give it the onions. Let's see what it does. clean up this garage floor but 
here we go it ran I'm gonna look up underneath it once I pull it in here but everything's running on it it's running really well I think and you just look at this end right here I know right now it doesn't do any justice but those white wheels with this poverty caps <laughs> look really good it needs a wash it's filthy but the cap stayed on yeah, so I'm gonna go in here I'm gonna clean this cardboard up and get some room on this floor to get this park back in here Well, that's gonna do it. We got it uh, all done. Got it out and running. Just had to do some adjustments as I, you know, I kept going back and forth. Um, I could hear it still whining a little bit, but I think it's just trying to get those bearings and stuff, getting some gear oil in there. It's really cold, so that gear oil is all gummy up. But um, it started right up, it ran well. I think it just needs to be cleaned. I think it looks good with these these rims and stuff on here so i'm excited um this was basically four days in the in the uh, process and uh i'm gonna try to i'm gonna try to drive it to kashok tomorrow and it's got a full tank of gas why not it rode around here town sounded really good drove her a while um so yeah all right well thanks for watching um click and subscribe if you're not a subscriber um Comment below with any, uh, you know, anything else that you think I should do to this truck or, um, you know, some advice that you might have on some of this. Again, this is all new to me. I have, I've never done this before. And, and so I'm just trying it out. But uh, it feels good to get it up on the road and, and get the chance to drive it. And so I'm looking forward to doing that tomorrow. And uh, maybe I'll take it through a car wash and spray it down tomorrow and get, uh, you know, get it cleaned up. But Anyways, like this video if you if you haven't already, and um, we'll see you on the next episode.